suggests that the NK cells, allo-reactive NK cells, can uh, mount a graft versus leukemic effect in AML. He couldn't find that effect at all in the acute leukemic, acute leukemic, uh, acute le lymphocytic leukemias. 90% uh, relapse when there was matching and 85% when there was no mismatching. So it's an effect that only seems to apply to AML patients. And the five-year uh, event-free survival in those AML patients was 60% if there was mismatching and only 5% if there wasn't mismatching. 60% is a pretty good uh, survival rate in any sort of transplant, bone marrow transplant situation. <coughs> He used a mouse model to prove that these allo-reactive NK cells were killing the leukemic cells. <coughs> he took severe combined uh, immunodeficient mice. These are mice who have a genetic uh, mutation that means they don't have any immune system at all. They don't have any lymphocytes. They're not capable of rejecting anything. So you can put human cells into a skin mouse and do sort of human experiments. <coughs> so, He's taken uh, human AML cells and put them inside the skid mouse. And because the, uh, the human cells uh, will react with an anti-CD45 antibody, you can detect the human cells by flow cytometry. And what we're seeing here are the leukemic cells that have been infused into the mouse and the mouse's own cells down here, which are CD45 negative. And he showed that by infusing these leukemic cells into the mice, uh, by about day 30, all of those mice die from overwhelming leukemia. On the other hand, uh, sorry, and then if he puts in some human NK cells, which are not allo-reactive towards those leukemic cells, we well, don't get any difference in the outcome. You still get all mice dying by 30 days. On the other hand, if you put in some uh, allo-reactive NK cells, in place cells that are allo-reactive towards the leukemic cells, then you can see uh, just, just 10 to the 5th, uh, you're getting to see, starting to see disappearance of the leukemic cells in the mouse. And if you put in twice as many, 2 by 10 to the 5th, you can no longer detect them by flow cytometry. And by doing a more uh, sensitive uh, assay, which is PCR, to detect the uh, AML-specific uh, gene, human gene, you can show that by putting in increasing numbers of these allo-reactive NK cells, you can actually eliminate all traces of the human leukemic cells. Uh, so this is the line, of the survival line along here for those mice receiving the H5-10-5th <coughs> allo-reactive NK cells. So it's sort of proof that what they saw in the bone marrow transplant situation is probably due to allo-reactive NK cells from the donor killing any residual leukemic cells in the patient. And uh, to cut a long story short, they showed that a acute, leukemia, a acute lymphocytic leukemia cells don't have uh, LFA1, which is one of these sort of handles that the NK cells need to interrogate a potential target cell. So it wasn't that uh, it's simply that the NK cells can't interrogate properly an A an AL cell as opposed to an AML cell. Okay, so if HLA-C mismatches uh, is what's causing NK allo reactivity, of course in an HLA-identical tra sibling transplant we don't have any mismatches at all. In a haplo-identical transplant, we've got one haplotype that's matched, we've got this HLA-C and maybe an HLA-B difference which will generate some NK allo reactivity. And then we've got mismatching at A, D, A, D, Q, D, P, which is really of no benefit or interest in terms of NK allo reactivity, it's, if you like, just nuisance value mismatching. Now in matched unrelated transplants, we often, we always try and find a donor who's matched at every HLA locus, 